In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create this procedural diamond marble floor tiles material. And then after we create the procedural material, I'll show you how to join it together into this custom node group with these customizable values. So we have the scale value to change the size of the entire material. So you can change the size depending on the size of your object and your scene. You can also change the roughness value here to make the marble more rough or more shiny. And then you can just change the marble scale. And then you can also just change the individual diamond scale so you can make some really big diamonds if you want to that actually looks pretty cool kind of changes the look of the material or you can make it really small then we have the base color which is going to be this white color but you can change it to whatever color you want and then we also have the diamond color so the default is black but you could change it to another color if you want to and then we also have the marble color which is going to change that little marble texture then we have the tile visibility, so you can turn this way down if you want the tiles to be less visible or even get rid of them entirely. And then we have the diamond bump strength, and then we also just have a noise bump strength. So there's a little bit of surface noise, you can kind of see it there in the reflections, and that's going to change the bump strength of that noise. And then finally we have this rotation value, so you can rotate this around if you want to to make it fit for your scene. And if you'd like to help support the channel and purchase this procedural material, you can get that on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page the links are in the description. And if you'd like to purchase all of my procedural materials, then definitely check out my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack, which comes with all of my procedural materials pre-set up for the asset browser with custom thumbnails, sorted catalogs, and customizable node groups. So once you set up my Ultimate Material Pack as an asset library into Blender, you can just drag and drop the assets onto your objects to add the materials to your 3D scenes. You can also purchase any of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create any of my procedural materials, you can check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist here on YouTube. So real quick, I'll show you how I set up the 3D viewport if you want to set up the blend file the same way that I did. So I went to the add menu and I just added a plane and I'm just going to use the plane to preview the marble material. Then I added this area light right here. So I just went to the add menu, went down here to light and added an area light and I pointed the area light kind of down here on the plane. And if you go over here to the area light settings, I just turned the power up to 10. So if I go into the rendered viewport mode, it just kind of gives some nice lighting shining down there on the plane. And then I also added a camera camera and I just pointed the camera down at the plane and if you select the camera and go to the object data properties I turn the camera's focal length up to 60. Now I also wanted to get some nice realistic lighting and reflections so I went here to the world properties and I added in this AutoShop 01 1k HDRI from polyhaven.com. The link will be in the description if you want to download it and I downloaded the 1k version and the HDR version. So what you can do here on the world properties is click on the yellow dot next to color and you can choose environment texture and then click on the open button and open up the downloaded HDRI and then I turned the strength down to 0 0.2 so it wasn't quite as bright. And then let's click here to go to the render properties. I'm going to scroll down here to the color management and I set the view transform to filmic and I set the look to very high contrast to make the colors more saturated. So I'm in the shading workspace. So I have the 3D viewport right over here and I'm in the rendered mode. And then I have the shader editor right over here. So I'll just minimize the properties panel. I'll select the object and I'll click on new to add a new material. And I'll just rename this material to diamond marble floor tiles. And then one more thing before we start creating the procedural setup, I'm going to be using the node wrangler add-on to preview the different nodes so if you don't have the node wrangler enabled you can click on edit you can go to the preferences and then just go here to the add-ons tab and you can go to the search and you can search for node wrangler and just enable the node wrangler add-on so i'll show you how to use it in the video so let's close the user preferences so if we go to the add menu we're going to start by searching for a brick texture so we'll add the brick texture right here and then to use the feature of the node wrangler you can select the brick texture and you can press Control t and that is going to add the texture coordinate in mapping nodes. And then you can also hold down the control and shift key and select the brick texture. So by holding down the control and shift key and selecting different nodes, that's going to preview the node on the object. So let's select the brick texture so we can preview it. Now you could use the UV coordinates if you wanted to UV unwrap your object, but I'm going to be using the object coordinates. So I'll put the object into the vector of the mapping and then the mapping will go into the brick texture. So now let's change some of the brick texture settings. So to make it not look like brick and look like tile instead, I'm going to turn the offset all the way up to one. And then here on color one and color two, I'm going to make sure these are both fully white. And then we can also change the scale. So I'll change the scale to a 2.5. And then also here on the mortar size, it's way too thick. So I'm going to turn the mortar size way down to a 0 0.005. And then this mortar smooth here, if I just click here and drag it out to make it bigger so we can read it, I'll turn the mortar smooth all the way up 
to one. So now it is kind of looking more like tile, but you can see that it's not squares, it is rectangles instead. So that's because we need to make the brick width and the row height the same. So I'm gonna turn this row height to 8.5, and now we have some nice square tiles. Now I also wanna keep my nodes nicely organized, so I'm gonna be adding frames. So I'm gonna box select these two nodes here, and I can press Control J to join it together into a frame, so you can select the frame and move it around. You can also select the frame and then press F2 to add a label, and I'm gonna call this mapping just to keep my nodes nicely organized. So let's drag the brick texture right up here, and then I'll drag these out of the way. And right down here, I wanna create the diamond group. So for the node group for the diamonds, I'll go to the add menu, and we're gonna search for a Voronoi texture. Let's drop it here, and I can control shift and select the Voronoi texture to preview it. And I also want to use the object coordinates, so we'll put the vector here into the vector of the Voronoi. And I can change some of the settings. So right here on the bottom setting, I'm going to change this to Manhattan instead. And now you can see it's starting to look a little bit like diamonds. And then I'll leave all of these settings how they are, except the random. I want to turn the random down so that they aren't just randomly moved around, but they're going to be having a consistent pattern. So now I want to make this more contrasty, so I'll go to the add menu, and I will search for a color ramp, and we'll put the color ramp after the Voronoi. Now if I drag these two tabs together, you can see they be can become more contrasty, so now it looks like diamonds. But I'm going to take the linear here, and I'm going to change it to constant instead, and that way it's going to be very sharp on the edges. So I'll put the black tab here, and then I will drag the white tab over to about here. Now later on in the custom node group, I want to be able to control the size of the diamonds. So if we make it lighter or darker, that'll control the size of the diamonds. So we can go to the add menu and we can search for a hue saturation value node. We can put this in between the Voronoi and the color ramp. This way the value is going to make that texture lighter and darker, and so that is going to change the size of the diamonds. So we can use this later in the custom node group. So we'll click and drag to box select these nodes. I'll press Control J to add a frame. And if I select the frame and press F2 to add a label, I can rename it to diamonds. So now I want to mix together the brick texture and the diamonds. So we'll drag this back here and I'll go to the add menu and I'll search for a mix color node to mix two colors together. Now what we want to do is put the brick texture color into color B and then we want the color ramp here the color of the color ramp to go into color A. And I can control shift and select the mix to preview it. So now here on the mix type here, I wanna add the dark values of the texture. So I'm gonna turn this to darken so it adds the dark values. So now if I turn up the factor here, you can see it's gonna be more of the tiles or less of the tiles. So I'm gonna turn the factor to 0.2 so you can see them, but they are pretty subtle. So just a 0.2 is pretty good. So now I want to make the custom colors, and for this it's really easy, we can just duplicate this darken, so press Shift D to duplicate, drop it here, and we can change the darken type back to mix. Now the black and white values, if we put the result here into the factor, the black and white values of this texture are going to determine what are going to be color A and what parts are going to be color B. So for color A I can make this black. You can see that's the diamonds, and then color B, this could be fully white, which will be the base color. So now we can use these colors in the custom node group later on in the tutorial. So now let's make the marble node group. So I'll go to the add menu, and we're gonna search for a noise texture, and we'll drop it up here, and I can control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. And we can change some of the settings. So I'll turn the scale to seven, and I'll turn the detail all the way up to 15, so it's more detailed. And also this roughness, I can turn to a 0.65, so it's even more detailed. Now let's also, go over here to the mapping and we can put the mapping vector into the vector of the noise texture so it's using the object coordinates. And also I'm going to hold down the shift key and right click and drag over the wire and let go. And what that's going to do is add a reroute so I can drag the reroute over here and that just keeps the wires more organized so they're not overlapping. Now I want to add a lot more detail to this noise texture so I'm actually going to select the noise texture and press shift D to duplicate and drop it here after this one. So now because the noise texture is going through the vector it's distorting the placement of the other noise texture. So now I can change some of the settings here, and the only setting that I want to change is this roughness. I want to turn it to a, like a 0.55 instead of a 0.65, just so there's not quite as much roughness, because you can see the roughness really does change how the material looks. So now we have a really cool marble texture. Now it's kind of grayed out and I want it to be more contrasty, so let's go to the add menu. And we can add a color ramp and we'll put the color ramp here after the noise textures. And then I can drag the black tab over and drag the white tab over to make it more contrasty. So I'll put the black tab here and the white tab maybe over here. So now I have a very cool marble texture.
So I'll box select these nodes and I'll join them together into a frame and I can add a label and I can just call this marble because that's the group of the marble textures. So now what I wanna do is mix in the marble with the original color. So I can take this mix node, I'll press shift D to duplicate it and drop it here. And I want the mix result here to be going into color A. And then I want this color ramp here to be going into the factor. So again, the white and black values will be determining what will be color A and what will be color B. But I just wanna add the dark values. So if I click on the mix here, I'll change it to darken. And let's control shift and select the darken to preview it. So now now color B here, because it's fully white, you can't see it at all because it's set to darken. But then as I turn this down more and more, that's going to make it more dark. So for my value here on color B, if you want to use the same color I'm using, the hex value is going to be six sixes. So I'm just doing that to make it kind of like a grayish color. But if you want more visible or less visible, you can change that color there. And of course, you can also change the color. You can make it more of a red color, whatever you want to do for the marble. You can also make it more contrasty by dragging the white tab and the black tab if you want to be able to see it better. But I wanted to keep it somewhat subtle. So now this dark in here, this can go into the base color of the shader, and I can drag this up here, and I will control shift and select the principal shader to preview it. And then the marble is very shiny, so I'm gonna turn the roughness to a 0.1, so it's pretty reflective. You can kind of see the reflections there in the HDRI lighting. So now I wanna add a little bit of surface bump, so I'll go to the add menu, and I'm gonna search for a bump node, and we'll drop the bump node down here. Now the first bump that I wanna add is kind of the marble and the tiles, so we can put this mix result into the height value. And if I control shift and select it to preview it by putting the color into the height value, that's gonna convert it to bump data. So now we can put this normal here into the normal and I can control shift and select the principal shader. So now if I kind of look here in the reflections, it looks kind of bumpy. And I wanna turn the strength to a 0.8 so it's not quite that strong. Now I do wanna add a little bit of noise over the surface of the bump. So let's go to the add menu and I can search for a noise texture and I'll drop it down here. Let's maybe drag these over so we have a bit more space. And then again, I want the mapping vector here to be plugged into the vector, the noise texture. So it's using the object coordinates. And let's control shift and select the noise texture to preview it. And I'll change a few of the settings. So I'll turn the scale to like a 15. I'll turn the detail a little bit up to like a four. So it's a little bit more detailed. So just turn that to a four. And then also the roughness here, I'll leave at 0.5. Now the lacanarity here, I'm gonna turn this up to a four as well. And the lacanarity is gonna add these little dots here. So you can see it kind of has a little dot pattern. So that's pretty cool. So now I wanna put this into the bump as well. So if I click on this bump, I'll press shift D to duplicate it and drop it here. So the normal can go into the normal, but now we have this extra height value that we can plug data into. So the noise texture factor can go into the height. So if I control shift and select the bump, you can see that's what it's doing. But of course that's way too strong. So on the bump strength, I'll turn that to like a 0.1. So now there's just a little bit of subtle surface bump. And then make sure the bump normal is going into the normal of the principal shader. And you can now preview the final material. So that's it for the final material, but I'll now show you how to join it together into a custom node group so you have more control over the material. And also one other thing you could do really quick, I'm just gonna box select these three nodes, so the bumps and the noise texture, press Control J to add a frame, and I'll add a label and just call it bump just to keep everything nicely organized. So to make the custom node group, I'll click and drag to box select all the nodes except the material output, and I'll press Control G to join it together into a node group. Now if I hit the tab key to go outside of the node group, I can drag the node group over here. Let's also click here and drag it out to make it a bit bigger. And I can also copy the material name and I can paste it here into the node group. So let's hit the tab key to go into the node group and I'll press the N key to open up the side panel. And if you go to the group tab, we have the group sockets. So here on the BSDF, I'm gonna rename this to shader just because I like that better. So now we have this group input, which we can plug values up to the group input to control them outside of the node group. So I first wanna control the overall scale of the material and the mapping is plugged up to all the textures. So the scale value will control the size of the entire material. So we'll put the scale into the extra socket. And then if I click on the scale, I don't want it to be three values. I just want one value to control the scale. So on the type here, I'm gonna change it from vector to flow instead. And then on the default value, I'll turn that to one. And let's hit the tab key to go outside of the node group. And the scale, I can now turn back to one. So that's controlling the overall scale. So we'll go back into the node group. 
Let's click on the node group and I can drag it way over here and I want to plug up the roughness value. So I'll put the roughness here into the extra socket and that's just called roughness. And then I also want to control the different scales of the textures. So let's drag this over here and I first want to control the marble scale. So this noise texture here is controlling the marble scale. So we'll put the scale into the extra socket. I can double click on this to rename it and I'll rename it to marble scale. Then I want to control the diamond scale. So I'll drag the group input down here and this Voronoi texture has a scale as well to change the size of the diamonds. However, you can see that's actually kind of messing it up. So I don't want to use the Voronoi scale because it's scaling the entire thing. I want to use the hue saturation value that we made to scale all the diamonds individually. So the value can go into the extra socket. And then if I double click on this to rename it, I'll rename this to diamond scale. Then I want to control the colors, so I'll drag the group input over here. And we first have the white one, which is the base color, so I'll put that there. And I can rename this to base color. Then I want to control the diamond scale, so that's color A here, which is black. So I'll put that into the extra socket, and I'll rename this to diamond scale. And then I want to control the marble scale, which is going to be this gray color here on the darken. So I'll put that into the extra socket, and I'll rename this to marble color and i totally messed that up here the diamond scale it needs to be diamond color not the diamond scale then i want to control the tile visibility so this dark in here has a value here this factor which will make it more visible or less visible so i'll put the factor into the extra socket and i'll rename this to tile visibility to control the tiles then i want to control the bump strengths so we'll drag this down here and the first one that i want to control is the tile bump strength or the diamond bump strength so i'll put the strength into the extra socket and I'll rename this one to tile bump strength and then this second one here is the noise so we'll put the strength into the extra socket and I'll just rename this to noise bump strength. All right, and then finally, I wanna be able to control the rotation just in case I wanna be able to rotate this material. So I'll click on the group input, drag it over here, and this rotation value from the mapping, we can plug that into the extra socket to control the rotation. So I'll drag the group input back here, and I'll hit the tab key to go outside of the node group, and I'll hit the end key to close the side panel. And we can now review the final material. So we have the overall scale, then we just have the roughness to make it more rough or shiny, then we have the marble scale and the diamond scale. Then we have the base color for the marble, then we also have the diamond color, and then we also have the marble color, which is that marble texture. Then we have the tile visibility, so you can make it more subtle if you want. We also have the tile bump strength, and the noise bump strength. And then finally, we have this rotation value so you can rotate the Z value to rotate where the texture is. So that'll be it for this tutorial. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to help support this channel and purchase the material, you can get that with the links in the description on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. You can also check out my ultimate Blender procedural material pack if you'd like to purchase all of my materials, or you can purchase each one of my materials individually on my Gumroad store. And to learn how to create more of my procedural materials, definitely check out my Blender procedural material tutorial playlist. The links are all in the description. So I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.